Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland from graphicinmotion.com and in this tutorial I will show you how to customize my Explosion logo reveal After Effects template. Before we get started with the customization, let's take a quick look at the content of the template. As you see here, we have two different projects included. The first one is the project in a Full HD resolution and the second one is the project in Ultra HD 4K resolution. So you can choose between these two resolutions. You also have this folder with the customization tutorial. I guess you already found that because you're watching it actually. And then we also have a folder with an audio link. And if you open this up, this link will lead you to Audio Jungle. And there you can get the audio file that Bauman Music created especially for this project. So I would really recommend to check this out and get this audio because it perfectly matches this animation. And then you have the footage folder, but you do not have to touch this one. Now let's start with the customization and therefore I will move to After Effects. In After Effects, first of all, I will open the project and I will use this full HD version just because it's a little bit quicker. And After Effects tells me that it has to convert this project. Don't worry, this is not an error. It just means that the project was originally created with an older version of After Effects. You just have to click OK and After Effects will convert it and then it will work. The project contains two different placeholders. The first one is the title placeholder, this one here, and the second one is the logo placeholder. But you can actually put whatever you want into these placeholders. So you could put in here a logo as well, or a graphic, or just a text title, and here the same. So let's take a look how we can do that. Let's take a look at the title placeholder. You can enter the title placeholder right here in your timeline. There is already, this composition is already open. And you see, it's a very simple composition. You only have a text layer here. So with this text layer, you can of course just do what you can do with all text layers. You can add uh, your title, change the font, and you can colorize it. And that way you created your title. And when you go to the render composition, you see that the title already updated. And it may look a little bit distorted in the beginning of the animation because these particles actually are distorting the title. So there's a nice interaction between the title and the particle animation. Let me ch change this to full HD or to full resolution. Then it looks a little bit nicer. The second placeholder is the logo placeholder. And if you open this up here, or you can also find these up here in the project panel, uh, you see that we have a placeholder here. This is just a text layer. You can enter a title here. You can also just put in your logo. So let's do that. Let's go to File and go to Import, Import File. And for the sake of this tutorial, I will use this logo here. So let's drop this into my logo composition. And let's turn off my placeholder. I want this logo to be white, so I will just add a fill effect to that, but, oops, this was the wrong effect. This is only my taste. Okay, now I have my white logo in here. And if we take a look, uh, I cannot even see my tagline because the logo is too big, so I will just scale it down a tiny bit. Let's see, something like that. And I will also maybe move it upward a little bit. Okay, so you see we have this green layer here. This is a text layer and that's the tagline. And please don't delete this tagline. Use this tagline to create your subtitle. You can of course turn it off if you don't need it. But if you want the tagline then use this text because the animation is on this layer. And you see that this text is appearing behind this blue mat here. And this is only a guide layer. So if you go to the render composition, you will see that this is not visible in the final render. So don't worry about that. This just helps to reveal the text as you can see here. So let's customize this text here. And therefore you can move your time indicator behind this marker because otherwise the text may not be fully visible. And I will just type in here graphic in motion GIM. And let's say I want to make this way bigger. I want to have a really big text. And you see immediately that we have a tiny problem here because now uh, even the animation is already finished, my text is not fully revealed. So we can go to the render comp and you see what we have here. Now we have this cut off text and of course we don't want that. So in case if you run into a similar problem, 
First of all, what I would recommend you to do is that you move down your text. So just select it, hold down shift, and then you can move down the text. And you see that the reveal box will move with the text layer, and that's okay. And now you can just select the reveal mat, select it, and just move this one up, like so. Now if we take a look at the animation, we see that in the beginning of our green layer here, the text is not fully covered by our, by our reveal mat. So there are two things you can do. First of all, you can select the tagline layer, and there you have this animation offset. And if you decrease the value, so actually you make it uh, smaller, like minus 140, you see now it is nicely covered. If your text is very big and the reveal mat doesn't cover it, then you can just scale this up a little bit. Just make it a tiny bit bigger or also on the x-axis, depending on your tagline. And now if I go to my render composition, now you will see that this tagline will animate on nicely and is fully covered in the beginning of the animation. So this is how you can enter your logo and edit the tagline. Now, the next step of the customization is, of course, to change the coloring. And I have to admit that there is one limitation to this template. It doesn't work with very bright background colors. This limitation occurs because of the way this was rendered. The fluid particle simulation was done with X particles in Cinema 4D. And to render that and to bring it into After Effects, I had to use uh, blend modes. And so you cannot use white. You can, but it will look a little bit strange. So I recommend that you use this template with darker backgrounds or with colored backgrounds in a mid-range lightness value. So let's take a look how we can set up the colors. Therefore, we go to the render composition and select the setup layer. And there you have a bunch of color controls. So let's say we want to change the look here and we want this to be a bit more bluish. So I will take over this blue now. It's a very bright blue. And you see, this is already a little bit too bright. And you see the particles here now nearly disappear. You lose a lot of detail if you use these bright values. So let's just make this a little bit less bright. So I will just turn this down a little bit, something like that. But I can increase the saturation a bit, make it really nice. This looks very good. And now I can just take over this color and I want to make this a bit darker in the middle here. Something like that. And here in these two, I will just change the hue so that I have more or less the same, the same brightness values here. You see they are very dark. And in the end here, you see a little bit more of this gradient here. And I think that this looks really nice. But now, of course, the look of our particles doesn't really look good. So we have to change that. First of all, let's do another thing. Uh, you see we have this shadow color here, and this is very subtle, but it actually makes a difference. If you take a look here at these shadow areas, if I change this now to this dark green, you see that it blends in a little bit nicer. So this way you can just control your shadows a bit. And let's say I want to make these shadows a bit cooler, the temperature of the color a bit cooler, and this looks really nice. Then there are also these light flashes. So if I solo this for a moment, you see it's a very subtle effect here, but it just enhances the flash of the explosion a little bit. And this has also a color. And I would recommend to set a similar color as your particles. So let me first of all, let me first of all colorize my particles and then we will deal with this flash here. So to colorize the particles, because they are pre-rendered, we are a little bit limited in colorizing them. If we select the explosion here and then change the hue, you will see that this will change the color of all the particles. And now I will just rotate this wheel until I get something that looks quite nice. And I think here in this area, it blends really nicely with our background. So maybe a bit more into the greens here. And this looks actually really nice. So let's check out the second explosion here with these light purple colors. Yeah, I think that this looks really, really good. I like that. Now, we can set up our flash in the beginning here, and therefore we just select the setup again, and we choose a very bright color here, so maybe a good color to choose here is actually that white, or this nearly white. If we take a look here, it's a bit bluish here. I think this is the right color for this flash. This will blend in nicely in the beginning here, when the explosion is happening. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay. 
So this is more or less the setup or the customization process. There are two more options that I didn't talk about now, and these are actually changing the background. So there is a jitter, and I can just show you this. If I set this to zero, and if I then change this project settings to 8-bit, it may occur that you see some bending here. So let's take a look at the end frame here. And actually, yeah, slight bending is occurring here. And if you render this with uh, H.264, small bitrate or whatever, it could create some bending and bending is always horrible. So we don't want bending and this is what the cheater does. So let's increase the cheater to 25 and you see the bending is nearly gone. You can make this higher if you need. I will set this back to 16 bits because then the, the gradients are a bit nicer. And then there is this blend value. And if I set this blend to zero, you will see that now the coloring of our background changes quite a bit. Now the colors are way less blended. So if we increase this back to the standard value of 900, you see they are nicely blended and you can specify a value here to your liking. So these are all the setup controls that we have. There is one more option that you have in this template. There are two cameras in here, as you can see. There is the straight camera. The straight camera means that we just dolly out of our animation in a straight line. So our title and our logo are always horizontally aligned throughout the animation. If you deactivate this camera by clicking this little icon here and activate the second camera rotation, you will see that now we have a little bit of a different animation. Now our camera is actually turning while revealing our title and slightly turning while revealing our logo and in the end it will then be straight. So these are the two options that you have. You have this straight camera and we have this rotation camera. You can choose between these. Last but not least, of course, you can add an audio to this render and there is this audio composition. It's already open right here. And there you can drag in the audio. As I said, I would recommend that you use the same audio that I used in the preview video that was produced especially for this template. So this is it for this customization tutorial. I uh, thank you very much for purchasing my file. If you have any questions, then please feel free to contact me either through my website, graphicemotion.com, or you can also send a PM through my video hive profile. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.